Greetings, fellow detectives, and welcome to Boiler Room Detective. The Case of the Low Delta T It was a bitter cold Friday evening when my cell buzzed. Sorry to call you on a Friday night, but I have a strange problem. My new building in Carnegie has no heat to one apartment, but the other apartments are warm, the customer said. Is it steam or hot water, I asked, since I'd never been to this location. It's hot water, he said. Have you tried bleeding it, I asked, thinking the radiator may be air bond. Yep, been bleeding for a half hour and no air, only water, he said. The cold apartment was on the second floor of a three-story building. The other seven apartments were warm. I looked around the boiler room and saw an old cast iron boiler with a rusty pump and several zone valves. The owner explained that each apartment had its own thermostat, which opened or closed a zone valve. The boiler temperature was controlled by the hot water reset control and the operating temperature control. The pump ran constantly if the outside air was below 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Looking at the boiler, I gasped when I saw the boiler temperature and then the operating control set point. I tried turning the heat up, the owner said. The owner had switched off the outdoor air reset control and raised the operating temperature control to 210 degrees Fahrenheit. Most hydronic systems are designed for a top temperature of 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Each zone valve had an external indicator that showed if the valve was open or closed. These valves also allowed you to open them manually in case of a failed actuator. The valve for apartment two was open. All the other apartment zone valves were closed. When I clamped a temperature probe on the supply pipe to the building, it read 208 degrees Fahrenheit. Moving the clamp to the return, I saw the return water temperature was 206 degrees Fahrenheit, only a 2 degree delta T or temperature drop. Most hydronic systems are designed for a 20 degree delta T. A wide temperature difference between the supply and return usually indicates a lack of flow, high heat load, or undersized heating elements. In this case, it was the opposite only a 2 degree delta T. This typically means the heating load is very low, which I knew it wasn't. Another common reason for a low delta T is excessive water flow. I looked at the pump and started closing the valve on the return of apartment 2. The temperature drop started to increase. We were up to 5 degrees. Then the pump started making loud noises. What is that? the owner asked. The pump is cavitating. There's not enough flow, I explained, and opened the globe valve until the noise stopped and then added a half turn for good measure. The delta T dropped again. The owner went into the apartment and returned, saying it was still cold. I was baffled as to the reason for the lone cold apartment. Could the flow be too high, I wondered? When I get stumped on a trouble call, I go back to the basics. After manually opening the zone valves for the other apartments, I noticed something strange. The temperature drop for apartment two started to widen. It was up to 12 degrees Fahrenheit. I asked the owner to check on the apartment. He returned a few minutes later to inform me the baseboard radiation was indeed heating. The flow must be too high when only one zone valve was open. I suggested adjusting each zone or apartment for a 20 degree delta T. He agreed but didn't like the idea of disabling the thermostats. After adjusting each apartment's flow for a 20 degree delta T, I lowered the boiler operating temperature control to 180 degrees and switched on the reset control. What about the thermostats, he asked. 
I explained that he would either need a variable speed pump or a bypass pipe to allow the proper flow to the building when only one zone was calling. That job still amazes me as I've never seen a hydronic system with water flow too high to not heat the radiation. If you would like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have my two websites. The Brewing with Steam site has monthly blog posts on steam systems for breweries and distilleries. I have written 11 books on boilers and they are available on Amazon. In addition, you could find some of my writings in these fine publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective, and I hope to see you on the next case.